This video is going to show our approach to replacing the Reliance Automax system platform to a Control Logic system platform. So let's look at the project. The first step is we need to develop a migration path from the Reliance Automax DCS system platform to the Control Logics platform. Next, we determine what items are at risk, what items have the greatest chance of failure, and what items are not even available on eBay. Then we look at to what the availability is of the production line. What is their typical production schedule, down days, or any schedule outages that it may have, so we can minimize the downtime needed for the upgrade. Then we take a logical approach as into the system upgrade and how we can implement those changes during the planned outages. And then we analyze the cost needed for the system upgrade. In phase one, we had determined that the auto bus IO drops and the automate 31 IO is the biggest liability on the line. So we will replace about 1200 IO points in nine different locations that, the con that is controlled over the Autobus IO network. We will upgrade the Automax Rack 22 with a new Control Logics processor. Then we'll interface to the existing Automax DCS network. We'll develop an interface to the existing Reliance Automax 45 IO. And we will provide an HMI client slash server computer system for interfacing and accessing data to the new control logic system. We take steps to minimize the amount of downtime on the line. We upgrade the system during scheduled down days each month. Our system will be in parallel with the existing system. Our design will be able to switch from the old to the new system and back and forth with less than five minutes. System testing will be done during scheduled down days and this will eliminate the time needed for a long outage. This is the existing Automax DCS network as we have it. There are several different processors. Each processor has a drop number and communicates to other processors based on the drop number. In our system, we're going to start out with eliminate and drop 22 and replace that with a control logics rack. This rack will emulate the old Automax rack drop 22. In addition, we're also going to remove drop 30 and replace that with a control logics drop as well. Each one of these drops will require no additional programming onto the other drops since it's emulating the existing Automax processor. Now let's take a look at our I.O. structure. This is the layout of the existing Automate 31 I.O. Presently there are nine physical drops with approximately 1200 I.O. points. We will rewire new Control Logics I.O. in parallel to all of this existing I.O. That, is, that there is right now. To parallel the I.O. first, you'll see here, we mount the new I.O. This I.O. is now in parallel to the existing I.O. Then we rewire the cards to intermediate terminal blocks. These terminal blocks here we have our wired both directly to the field devices and to the original I.O. cards. And we have a cable that plugs directly in to the new I.O. inputs. And then once all the I.O. has been rewired, our new network would look like this. Each drop communicates to a network switch, which communicates to the control logics process. Here is the layout of the existing Automate 45 I.O. system. Our design will be able to keep all of this existing I.O. We will eliminate the Automax controller that is controlling the I.O. and replace that with a gateway module that interfaces to the control logics over Ethernet. 
using this existing I.O. is a great option to save cost and reduce downtime needed to rewire all of the I.O. points. Once the control logic is in place, you can choose to either keep the 45 I.O. or upgrade the drops as time permits to control logic's I.O. Now let's take a look at converting the program. First, we have to correctly address all of the new I.O. and interfacing I.O. Then, correctly map out the DCS network communication, convert the program, and when we do so, we try to keep similar addressing scheme during our conversion. We've also added an underscore I for inputs, an underscore O for outputs, and an underscore B for internal bits to the I.O. addresses. In here, you will see some of the documentation that we have imported directly from the Automax processor into the Control Logics processor. Here, we've also added the underscores, zeros for outputs, and I's for inputs. And this is an example of some of the documentation that we Then we convert all of the routines. We try to keep each of the routines as a similar name as what it was in the Automax system. Here is an example of the ladder logic conversion. Every line of code is duplicated to match the program as it was in the Automax processor. We even convert the structured text. Here you can see we added some comments to reference the Automax line number for troubleshooting purposes. In addition, we also convert to function block programming. All of the values and timers, ramp rates, multipliers, are the same as they were in the Automax controller. Proper setup of these values will eliminate the need to adjust ramp rates, counters, or timers during the startup testing phase. Now, let's Our system has a client-server configuration. In this system, we supplied three client computers mounted out on the machine floor and one development system. Each client accesses the server computer. Here are our server computers. The first physical server is the host server that has two virtual servers. The virtual server HMI app is the server that communicates to the PLC and displays that information and alarms on the client computer. The virtual server HMI DC is the domain network controller for the HMI network. The second host server has three virtual servers. HMI Historian logs all the historical data on the production line. HMI Web is a web-based app that allows users to use a web browser to look at historical data. Users can look at the data via tablet, mobile phone, but not a flip phone. The HMI server backup only function is to automatically back up the servers on the network hard drive. This has two physical hard drive that are mirrored in case of hard drive failure. In our configuration, we use VMware as the host software to host our virtual machines. We have on this particular example, we have one physical machine and two virtual machines on here. One's a domain controller and the other one's app. In order to access the HMI app, we simply go down to remote desktop, click on our remote desktop. Now we have access to the actual server that is running. This server is collecting all the data and it accesses the different PLCs on the line. Since we put the system in, we've also added a few other additional SIG 500 processors that were already existing on the line to collect data and convert the information. Here are 
those are the screens we had developed for the operators. We took a very intuitive approach in our design and give the operators very useful information. We have trending along with the necessary line speed, splice tracking information as well. Since we connected the Evans PLC with the HMI server, we are also able to display that information on the same HMI computer. Here we show some of the automation we have designed into the HMI screens. This shows the belt wrapper going out, and then we show the belt wrapper moving in on the second recoiler. You can see the shear actually come down and cut as well. And finally, this is one of our HMI computers as we mounted it on top of the existing operator's console. This system was done as a turnkey installation. We had provided all parts, engineering, installation, setup, startup testing, weekend installation, the HMI development, the network and setup of the network, and also the server setup and configuration. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please give us a call at the number below.